always on call and ready to go, the gleaming red mega machines of the fire service are familiar to us all. With their sirens blaring and blue lights flashing, they waste no time on their way to the scene. When the alarm goes off, the fire engines are in action in seconds. Firefighters must always be on red alert and they must test their equipment regularly. Practice is really important and here at Leicester, fire drill plays a major part in normal day-to-day -day duties between real emergencies. Everybody has their own important job to do, but they must all work as a team. Discipline and obeying commands make the job safer for all concerned. Routines are practiced again and again to make sure they are done just right. Much of the machinery used today is high-tech equipment. The modern fire brigade is always developing and the firefighter must be trained to work with all the gear. Other people's lives depend on it. The ground crew may be behind you, you may be strapped in, you know your job through years of experience, but it still takes a lot of nerve and a good head for height to work at the top of a turntable ladder. To be a firefighter today is to be part of a highly efficient and disciplined force, using some of the most modern and powerful equipment in the world. Rescue skills must be kept at top level with constant training and practice. The Fire Service College here at Morton and Marsh, Gloucestershire, trains over 6,000 students a year from brigades all over the world. They've created pretend railways, motorways, houses and even industrial tower blocks where emergency situations are made as real as possible. They have 32 tenders here, including many makes and designs of the most commonly used fire and rescue vehicle, the pump engine. They may be made by several different companies, and they may look different from the front, but they all do the same job. At the Fire Service College, they have a big choice.
The pump engine is the workhorse of the service. It is the basic all-round vehicle and can be fitted out for specialist tasks. This appliance is most generally used as a water tender ladder rescue vehicle. But rather like a Swiss Army knife, when you open up the sides, there are tools for all incidents. They carry three types of ladder. The longest is 13 and a half meters. It comes in three sections and needs four men to use it. The crew includes a driver, the commander, and between two and four firefighters. This Leyland Carmichael 180 Turbo carries 1800 litres of water and can go at 145 kilometres an hour. Every time the brigade is called out, the chances are you'll see one of the many makes of pump engine racing to the scene. Two pump engines race to an exercise at a domestic house fire. Even in practice, they have to respond as if it was the real thing. There's no traffic here, but on real roads, the driver has to be very careful of other vehicles and can only cross red traffic lights by looking first. He wouldn't want to cause an extra emergency. Pump engines weigh 10 tons empty and with a full load, the driver has to control a 13-ton vehicle at speed. Morton is the one place where in practice the flames are real. Everything is just as it would be in a 999 call. It's got to be the best way of preparing for a real emergency. Here, the commander is the man in the white helmet. Bill, get your crew ladder off. See to that casualty up there. We'll get right. some BA men in. Right up here. Look here. Right, you come back, Jimmy. Right, look here. Come on down. Hold up, boys. Hold up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Teamwork is essential because conditions at an incident will be dangerous, hot, smoky and dark and any person caught inside will be frightened. Firefighters are trained to be calm. Right, Fires can start on the ground floor and sometimes people can be trapped upstairs. So while the flames are being fought, the rescuers must get up there as fast as they can. The staircase may be burned out, and the only way of escape is from the roof. Firefighters need to be fit, because in a roof rescue, they may have to use the famous fireman's lift.
Before leaving, the brigade must make sure the fire is completely damped down so that one burning ember doesn't spark the blaze again. All the gear must be put back in exactly the right place, ready for the next emergency. Only when all the final checks have been made and the ladders secured can the pump engine prepare to leave the scene. As well as putting out fires, the pump engine is used for all types of rescue. Nowadays, they are called out to nearly as many road traffic accidents as fires. The crew needs to be trained for all sorts of emergency, and here at Morton, they can learn their skills away from the actual roads and screaming traffic. To keep the atmosphere tense, they still use lights, sirens and real cars. Two pump engines and their crews must help any passengers trapped in the tangled metalwork. Open. No, locked. Your side? No, locked. One there, one there. Same the other side. Okay, Steve, break the screen then. Okay, good. Okay, tap it through. Tap it through under control. Right, let's have a long spine board in. Right, when he comes back. Just support him, put the spine board across here and then we can put Graham onto it. Just support this end. Graham, shove your helmet in. Let's get you in around our casualty as soon as we can. Okay, okay get your head down. Just slide him in. The casualties may be dummies. The fighters treat them just as they would a real person. Okay, ease him back up into an eyes forward position. Let's have the windows down, take the front screen out, Steve. Obviously, when someone is injured, spoiling the car beyond repair is the last thing to worry about. It's the person who matters. In a case like this, when the driver is trapped, the fire brigade often decide the best way to free him or her is to remove the roof. To use the cutters without splintering more glass, they need to take the windscreen out. And to shield their eyes, they all have to wear protective goggles. Okay, mate. Lift it clear, put it underneath the car right away. Yeah. Same with the rubber seal. Simon, okay, Simon can you come in, in and give me hand with the oxygen? Yeah. Now with better access to the casualty, the team can give first aid. Fellas, as soon as you've got the oxygen and collar on, then we'll have the roof off. Yeah. 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 These hydraulic pincers can cut through metal like a can opener and they are powered by a portable generator, another vital piece of equipment carried on the RTA tenders. I'll get the casualty right. shield in. Right, shield in. Okay, Steve. Cut low on the pillar. Okay, when we've done this pillar, work your way anti-clockwise round the car and end up with the last two cuts close to the casualty. Next comes the roof. The rescuers must obviously try to be as quick as possible, but they mustn't rush and cut corners. Okay, low on the B pillar. Okay, 
Press the wing there to open up that gap, get the spreaders in, and let's take the door away. Okay, let's go for it. Pinching the front wing like this makes it easier to get at the door hinges. Fire Brigade always works closely with the other emergency services and it won't be long before the driver is free. On a genuine motorway incident, both the pump engines and the ambulances would try to park so that they don't get in the way. In order to keep the traffic flowing freely, where possible, they keep at least one lane open. Once again, the pump engine has proved its value as one of the most important vehicles in the emergency services. Before leaving the scene, the firemen will tidy up broken glass and put sand on any oil spills to stop another accident happening, while other services will remove the smashed cars. another very necessary machine for the rescue brigade's fleet. The chemical incident unit may not look much but it holds special equipment for dealing with situations where there is danger of acid or poison polluting the water, ground or air. As ever, the pump engine is on hand to provide power and water. Here at the college, they have old chemical rail tankers to rehearse incidents. The fire service often has to gain access to other transport systems. Shower. Okay, decontamination shower unit. One of the college instructors the runs through procedures with a colleague as they set up the unit. A possible risk of chemical spillage is that it can spread quickly and a firefighter could get some of the dangerous liquid onto his clothes or boots and transfer it somewhere else. The unit contains a high pressure shower which is fed water from the pump engine. Using the workhorse of the fire service, the fire appliance, opening now the tank valve on the vehicle, delivering from the tank and testing that we do have water. They must check that it is all working before they risk getting any chemicals on them. The team must wear full protective clothing and be safe from both liquids or any poisonous gases that may be leaking. These suits aren't easy to get into and to make sure they are fully sealed in, the firefighters help each other dress. Oxygen masks are standard as the suits are airtight. 
The end result is just like a spacesuit. They've got to check all over the tanker to try and spot any leaks. They'll also be looking for labels which could let them know what chemical the tanker is carrying. Some are more dangerous than others. Leaked gas is invisible and acid can look just like water. Wherever gases or chemicals are concerned, the professionals must be called in. Very often the danger turns out to be small, but the emergency services can never be too careful. At the end of every exercise, the crew must be washed down, so just to be safe, the pressure shower is always used. The Chemical Incident Unit is packed with really modern equipment to deal with today's pollution problems. The bigger fire engines are known as specials and will be called to incidents where the pump engines can't do it alone. Several companies which convert vehicles make specials as well as pump engines. Carmichael is one of the best known. All these mega machines are based on an ordinary lorry with the cabins and lockers specially designed. The turntable ladder is hydraulically powered and when parked can turn 360 degrees and extend to over 30 meters. The reason ladders were made longer and longer is because buildings became higher and higher. Their main job is for rescue. There is a hose which runs up the side, but water is heavy and the ladders being made of strong but light aluminium can be a bit unsteady at the top. Normally, a turntable ladder would have a three-man crew with a commander, base operator and the one on the end of the ladder. If you were high up on the balcony of a burning building, you'd certainly be glad when one of these turned up. Another type of special is the hydraulic platform. Here a Simon Snorkel SS220 is mounted on a Saxon Dodge G16 body. It can only carry three in its basket, so it would take rather a long time to rescue a lot of people. But unlike the turntable ladder, 
it is fully stable for spraying water right at the end of its 22 metre reach. Exercises at Morton can start some way away from the incident. A command vehicle, hydraulic platform and pump engine respond to a call. Going to a real fire, they'd probably take different routes, so at least somebody would get there if a road was blocked. This drill needs the platform for an emergency at the industrial tower block. Teamwork is here again. The pump engine gets extra water by plugging into the mains. They carry enough hose on board to reach a hydrant a quarter of a mile away. The pressure on mains water varies. So to keep it regular, it must be fed through the pump engine. So that it is really stable at the top, the platform has special legs which pop out at the side. This makes the base wider and stops any chance of toppling over, even on very windy days. When it's stable, the platform can be connected up to the pump engine for its extra water supply. Above the ground, the firefighter's on his own with a job to do. As the saying goes, it's tough at the top. He'll go as close as he safely can, keeping in constant contact with the ground by phone. If this tower was really alight, flames could be licking out feet away. His only protection would be the powerful fountain of water from his hose.
platform can squat in one minute the same amount of water as 10 full baths. But this jet must be controlled because the power could damage the inside as much as the fire. The platform even has a drenching system of its own to make sure it doesn't get too hot near the fire. Keeping cool is part of the job for men and machines. The fingertip controls bring the basket down. While the Simon Sorkel is one of the safest hydraulic platforms you can get, it's always a relief to be coming gently back down to earth. London's Heathrow is the busiest international airport in the world. At peak times, a plane is either taking off or landing every 30 seconds. An airport has more material which can easily catch fire within its boundaries than almost anywhere. Fire protection is really important, so they have some fantastic fire engines here. Heathrow has a new custom-built fire center with its own control tower. Any incidents, big or small, which need the varied skills of the fire service are controlled from here. Luckily, actual plane crashes are very rare, but firefighters use extremely realistic practice drills. For exercise, for exercise, Trident aircraft, Starboard engine when alight. The biggest machine at Heathrow is the Carmichael Corpus 6x6 airport crash fire rescue vehicle. It is six-wheeled, rear-engined and can accelerate from 0 to 80 kilometers an hour in 34 seconds. 
It can spray foam up to 60 meters from its monitor, which can be reached by a crew member while they're going along. There are also two foam hand lines kept from the lockers on either side of the vehicle. The Siren is the more American-style warbler, and the whole machine would cost about a quarter of a million pounds. If they were attending a real crash, the airport firefighters have permission to cross the runways with both the tower and driver keeping a sharp lookout for planes. Within the airport perimeter, the fire services must reach any incident in under three minutes. If there is a major incident outside the perimeter, as many as 90 fire engines could be called from all around. Air crashes are always extremely dangerous because planes are full of fuel and it needs a mega machine to tackle a fire like this. Foam is an ideal material for use in airport fires. It's made from a chemical called Triple FP, which is mixed under pressure with water inside the tender. What comes out is a film of bubbles which spreads like a blanket and starves the flames of oxygen, putting out the fire. The Cobra is designed to squat half its tank in about a minute and could fill a public swimming pool in two. A lot of foam in a short time. The steaming bodywork still needs the final flushes of foam to dampen the debris. When it's all over, the bubbles will drain harmlessly away. From safeguarding the lives of airline passengers to dealing with fires in houses and factories, from attending road traffic accidents and clearing up chemical incidents, the fire brigade of today relies on its fast specialist machines to make the world a safer place. <laughs>